Welcome back to my kitchen island studio here at Flat Rock Elementary. All right. So the things you need today are, of course, your drawing from last visit, watercolor paints, a brush, water, and some crayons. Because after we're done painting, we're going to add our details in with the crayons. What were we discussing? Oh, yes. Foreground, middle ground, and background. I have two pictures here that show you foreground, middle ground, and background. We have the pumpkins in the foreground. We have the crops in the middle ground. And we have the sun, the stylized sun in the background. Well, I could give this as an example to paint today, or I can move on to this one. I think this is probably the better one to use right now because although I have foreground, middle ground, and background in both, I do have these trees to contend with. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, help you out at first, and then I'm going to be quiet and zing through it so you can kind of see it, but not hear it. All right? So here we start with orange. Oh my heavens, do you remember how to make orange? Ah, I have a song. Red and yellow, red and yellow, that makes orange, that makes orange. Oranges are yummy. You remember that, don't you? Clear from kindergarten? Of course you do. Hey, Snow, you need to get on out of here. The boys and girls have to see this. Sorry about that, boys and girls. Here we are. So let's make orange. Now the orange that we get with the watercolors is not perfect, perfect, perfect. I wish it was, but it's not. The temper paint works so much better. So if you have access to that, that's great. No matter which one you use, however, <laughs> the yellow, you need a ton of yellow, just an absolute ton of yellow, and then a little smidge of red. So let's start. Here we go. And I always just mix in the lid. I clean it after I'm done. I use that for my palette. And I go round and round and round and round and round. Now for my pumpkins, I don't want to make them all the same kind of orange because that really gets boring. And then I'm going to use just a little bit of red. There we go. Oh, that's a pretty good yellow orange. Looks a little brown for my taste, but eh. It is what it is. Here we go. So there's a yellow orange, and I'm going to put this one off to the side. Make sure you go around those leaves. There we go. That's a yellow orange. That works for me. Now I'm going to add just a smidgen more of the red, and it should get a little oranger. Now if you have any other color in there like I kind of have, ooh, could be bad. Could be bad. No, oh, that's pretty good. Let's try that one out. Yep, that's pretty good. That works for me. And I'm going to go right over that vine. Notice I kind of have a tendency to go in the way it grows. So that way, if it leaves any texture behind, it makes sense. And I do get lighter as I go. Now I want one that's a little redder just so I have the idea of yellow, orange, orange, and red, orange. It's always good to have a little extra. You gotta be careful because you don't want it to look like a tomato in the background. All right, I think that's pretty good. And let's go back to the yellow. There, let's get this one done. There we are. Now for my background here, I want to make some greens. <sighs> hmm. Maybe brown over there. I've got a lot of brown going on already. I don't know. Maybe, you know what? Let's go yellow, green, and green. See if we can get that. All right. And you'll be able to use some dark blue in the background there. We're going to get there eventually. 
All right, so lots of yellow. Well, I better clean that out first. If I leave that red in there, I'm going to get brown. No, I'm really not looking forward to that. Round and round and round and round. Looks like the first color I'm going to have to replace is yellow. That probably makes sense. Oh no. Well, that works. I'll buy that. So I'm going to go right along there with that one. Now the way this is going to work is you kind of have to go back and forth. So I'm going to do one, I'm going to skip one, and we're going to come back. So that's a little blue. Let's see if I can get that little greener. There we go. Notice I'm adding a little texture there just by using my brush a little differently. We'll be talking about the element of art texture soon enough. But there you go. You want to incorporate as much as you can in your artwork all the time. So we have a little bit of texture going on. Uh-oh. <laughs> little paint came off my brush. All right. So I probably need to go lighter yet in the green because typically that's what happens as you go back into your space in a landscape. Um, so let's see if I can make that happen. Lighter would be by using less color. Okay, notice I'm just going right over those trees. I am. I'm going to add a little more paint. But I'm also letting the watercolor work with me. And I'm doing a different texture. Since it's so far away, you're going to not see nearly the amount of texture that you normally would. All right, I went right over that. You're probably wondering why I haven't done the stems. Those are because it needs f smaller fine motor skills. So I'll go ahead and let you use crayons for that part. I'm going to leave the moon as white as I possibly can. And I'm moving on to what I think is a dark blue. Let's see. Ooh, I can use a combination of those two blues. Oh, I kind of like that. So let's see what happens here. Right now, I am going to go right on over those trees, completely ignoring them, but staying in these lines. Now, because I want it darker, I'm mixing up two of the blues that I have. And then wiggling right off that edge. Now notice the sky is going from side to side. It wouldn't look right if my sky were going up and down. Now I kind of wanted to give this a nightish feel, so we'll see. Maybe I'll go back over it again. It doesn't look dark enough. Uh-oh. Too dark. Got to wiggle that on out. Notice I'm doing some areas lighter, some darker. That's just what happens naturally when you use watercolor.
All right, so we're going to feather in a little bit of this odd grayish blue and hope that I like it. Let's see. Go right in there. Oh, there we go. It's just a very subtle effect. So it's not as white as what that moon is. All right. Well, I think the background's done. I'm going to go ahead and start with the crown. Now, when you're doing the crown, make sure you have a scrap piece of paper because what if you don't like that color right away? Hmm, so first of all, I need some kind of brown. Let's see, here's a brown, there's a brown, where's a brown, brown. Test it out, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's pretty dry. I usually use a combination. I might also want to use a little black. Because I made my sky so dark, I don't think, you know, you can very, you can barely see the difference. I'm going to go ahead and use some of this brown and then fill in with black. Please wait until your paper's pretty dry before you start going back into it. Otherwise, it will immediately tear. There we go. Yep, definitely got to look for that. Well, maybe dark or gray. No, I don't think dark gray is going to work at all. I wonder where that black went. I broke it, so I know it's in here somewhere. Ah, found it. Get on down. All right, so there we are. We have a landscape. Please, boys and girls, as you upload these into Schoology, I do not want to see a landscape that looks just like mine. Take a look outside your windows. Take a look um, through photographs that maybe you have. Figure out your own landscape. Just make sure it has a foreground, it has a middle ground, and it has a background, all right? Well, I showed you a couple different ideas you know when we're at school, I never finish anything. So that way you have to use your own imagination. I know we're not at school right now and it makes me very sad. However, you can still use your imagination and not have anything look just like mine. So can't wait to see you and have a good night. Bye-bye.